hello and welcome to this edition of Talk Time. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about health, uh, specifically about AIDS and all of its various ramifications. Welcome to Talk Time. Hello? Okay, uh, I'm Why? He, my wife, can't send sending message you. Hey, you're going to move me. Hello? I didn't know what's happening. What's happening? It's a chance to move to be a quiet quiet. Say what? I didn't say. Besides, when a friend, I'm so used to it. Uh huh. You have testing messages here. And I'm facing so. I'm just trying to tell you, man. She says, I'm going to be a man. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to be a man. And you also want a family drilling company limited for one car. What's it then? Family drilling company limited. You're too far away. Biofilm, biogas, swimming pool, plumbing in Nassau, yeah, yeah, be, Freya, 0244 333 and that says 0244 144 Me and Pa and Me want you, me be to talk time and this week we are talking about health we are talking about AIDS we are talking about all the things that are related to the fight against AIDS in relation to other problems in the health sector and we are particularly privileged to have with us in the studio Mr. Chairman Etuahini who is the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission so you're welcome to the studio and thanks for having me what is the situation with regards to AIDS generally? Is it, is it coming down? Is it rising? What is the general situation? What are the figures? Right. Thank you very much. Uh, HIV in the country, uh, we normally would say Ghana has a generalized epidemic, which means that the is well established in the general population and so every community any social group uh, you can find HIV and the number of people currently living with HIV in the country is about 346,000 wow. and uh, about 66 percent of them are females and we also have so you can look at age groups you can look at age disaggregation of the HIV population as well presently the national prevalence is about 1.68 percent which is less than two percent and it has been so over the last uh, six, seven years. The, normally, I prefer talking about new infections rather than prevalence, because prevalence only tells you the proportion of the population living with HIV. But the concern of managers of HIV programs is the new infections. Because if you are having rising new infections, it means you are adding on to the HIV population. And as at the end of last year, 2020, uh, new infections were that occurred in that year alone was about 18,900, a little more, but let's say 18,900. Of this number, uh, the adult population constitute 53 percent and 28 percent of the new infections were accounted for by young people aged 15 to 24 and that is one area of major concern for us because we expect that for us to 
um, and AIDS. We have to have a generation free of HIV. And the young people are the, uh, our focus. If we have a young generation that is free of HIV, then it means we are going to, in the near future, we are going to have a population without HIV. But unfortunately, HIV, new infections in young people, is very high. And even among the young people who were newly infected last year, 83% of them are females, that is young uh, women, adolescents and young women. And when you look at these figures, it is quite clear that the infections in these uh, young women is not coming from young men or ad uh, adolescent young, uh, and young men. It's coming from adults, adult males. And as you know, HIV, transmission in Ghana is largely through sexual contact. About 80% of all HIV infections are counted for by sexual activities. And so it is the older men, you know, uh, spreading the uh, epidemic among the, the young females. And that, that is a concern because intergenerational sex uh, creates a number of situations uh, uh, in every country. Uh, one is teenage pregnancy, and the other is sexually transmitted infections. And so far as HIV is concerned, uh, it's a major co uh, issue for us. And we will want to encourage uh, adult uh, men that they will have to protect their female partners. It's very important that they do so because they are putting the young people at risk of HIV. Um, when it comes well, to the well, boys... Well, well, before then, let's, let's dwell on the significance of the cases. Okay. AIDS cases in our country, less than 2% of the population have AIDS. Okay. We are also now told about the introduction of drugs as well. Before, if you got AIDS, it was like a death sentence. It is no longer a death sentence. Yeah. If you have these two factors, do you still consider it a major problem? Yes. H okay, so let's clarify. AIDS is the late stage of HIV infection. When someone has AIDS, it means that is symptomatic. Mm -hmm. It means that he's progressed to disease stage, which means he has the if not all, most of the symptoms of the disease. And if not treated, that person is likely to die uh, in no time. And so, but HIV is the infection, is the virus uh, that causes AIDS. And so <clears throat> HIV is still a major public health concern because its related diseases are some of the leading causes of death in Ghana. So AIDS death is one of the leading causes. In fact, until the last two years or so, it was always about number two or number three. Now, when I check the data, is the sixth of the ten top leading causes of death in the country. How is that so? I mean, two percent of the population have it. How can it be one of the leading causes, especially when we have all these drugs, you know, that 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 enables people to live longer? So yes. Thank you for that question. That that is uh, one of the challenges that we have. Anti, with antiretroviral treatment, nobody living with HIV must progress to disease stage, that is uh, to uh, have AIDS or develop AIDS because the drugs suppresses the viral load, I mean the 
amount of virus in their body uh, to the extent that it becomes undetectable. And at that point, if somebody is virally suppressed, then that person uh, cannot transmit the virus to his or her partner sexually. Mm -hmm. And it also means that the person has the ability to prolong, you know, the process of disease progression. It would take, if he doesn't stop taking the drugs, there is no way he will have AIDS. And so the question you ask is so important. Why then are we having people dying of AIDS? At this day and age, nobody should die of AIDS because of antiretroviral medicine. But the problem we are seeing is that uptake of antiretroviral uh, medicine is not up to the appreciable level. Presently, about 73% uh, of people who know they have HIV, who have been diagnosed, are on treatment. So we still have quite a number of them. And this is quite recent. In the, in the last four years, it was very low. So from 2016 to 2020, it's gone you know, significantly high. And that is very good. And we commend the Ghana Health Service, the NACP, who are implementing the antiretroviral treatment program for the excellent job done. But we still have a long way to go because you have people who start the treatment and within a short while they drop off. Why? They drop off for many reasons. One is stigma. Stigma because, uh, and the fear of you know people getting to know is also because of stigma and so stigma is a major contributing factor people will want to keep their status uh, unknown to even family members and to the public because they did, wouldn't want to be mistreated because of their serious status or having HIV. So sometimes they don't even tell their partners. And when they begin to realize that it appears, or they sup suspect that it appears people are getting to know, then they stop any activity that would expose or confirm that they have HIV. And one of it is to uh, stop taking the antiretroviral medicines. Uh, for some, it may relate to HIV treatment is free, so we will not say that use, accessing the, the medicine and using is of any cost to the individual, but there are related costs. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you have to have good nutrition to maintain, you know, adhere to treatment. Um, and if they don't have food to eat, then they find it difficult to continue the treatment. Uh, the other thing is that some of them, because of stigma, if he lives in, let's say, uh, somewhere in Eastern region or uh, Volta region, he will prefer coming to Kualebu or Rage to pick their drugs because they don't want any family member to know or see. And so that entails travel cost. And, some t and, and if they don't have the means to do that frequently, then they skip you know, uh, going to the hospital for refill of their drugs. So there are a number of factors relating to that, but what we are saying is that when antiretroviral treatment is for life, because presently there is no cure for HIV. And once you start, you will have to continue until uh, we find cure or until you die. But the the good thing about it is that if you adhere to treatment, you live long because the uh, uh, life expectancy of those who are on treatment, antiretroviral treatment, and those who are not, uh, is not significantly different. And so you can live as long as possible on antiretroviral treatment. And therefore, you have, to, you have to take the drugs every day. And you don't have to stop 
uh, taking the drugs. Uh, so that's what I will say about that mm -hmm. for now. <clears throat> So we're going to go on a short break, and okay. uh, when we come back, I'd like to ask some other questions okay. about whether or not the drugs are available. You know, if the drugs are available, people can take them. Yeah. If they are not, people simply cannot take them. So we're going to go on a short break, and when we come back, we we'll deal with that issue. Now, viewers, we are talking to Mr. Chairman Etuahini, who is the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, and we are talking about AIDS. Short break. who is the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission. Now, sir, are the antiretroviral drugs available? They are available in more than 500 facilities across the country. And I say, when I say facilities, I mean health facilities. So in all the teaching hospitals, regional hospitals, uh, district hospitals, and even some polyclinics, the drugs are available and so people don't have to travel long distances to access antiretroviral medicines and the drugs are free so we encourage everybody to rather go to the nearby health facility uh, for the drugs instead of traveling long distances uh, to access drugs what about the test are the tests also free uh, where can you get tested? Test, you can get test, uh, HIV test is free. You can get it in more than 5,000 health facilities in the country. Uh, and that is very simple because it's rapid test. We do the first test, which is first response. The, the cassette that is used is called first response. Uh, within 10, 15 minutes, you should get the results. If the result shows that you are reactive, then we will do confirmatory tests and we use aura uh, quick, aura quick. Uh, they can do, instead of blood, they could also use uh, aura swap to test. Um, now we have added a third uh, segment to it for also for confirmation. And so, Anyone who tests in any health facility, will be, he will go through these three steps of testing. And once it is shown to be positive, it means it is truly positive. And therefore, you have to accept the offer of treatment. Normally, when people are tested, we, the policy is for them to uh, receive treatment immediately. It doesn't, regardless of their CD4 count. CD4 is the, uh, the immune, uh, is related to the immune system. If it is low, then it means that uh, previously we said if the CD4 count is less than 500, uh, then uh, the person qualifies to be on treatment. But now, it's regardless of your CD4 treat, uh, uh, count, you have to be put on it immediately. Like malaria, when you test positive, you are giving mala anti-malaria drugs. It's the same thing when you test positive, we give you anti-HIV drugs. That is antiretroviral medicines. Please accept it. 
Now, some people, when they test positive, they are in denial. So, they continue moving from one facility to another to repeat the test, thinking that one of them will show negative, but it will not. Irrespective of the number of places you visit for tests, it won't change the results. It won't change your status. Once you have tested positive, because we go through rigorous process and the, and the testing procedure is standard. So even if you go outside the country and you test, you are going to still test positive. And you know, repeat test is costing the country because the test is free. But we import the, the uh, test kits and the, all the supporting you know, logistics to give people tests. And so it is costly. And two, it is also um, denying people who should have had tests, you know, uh, the opportunity to do so. And so we encourage everybody that once you are diagnosed to have HIV, your status is truly uh, the result of that diagnosing, diagnosis. And please accept the offer of treatment. Go on treatment as quickly as possible because early treatment is better. It will, it will assure you know, uh, better treatment outcomes than if you delay treatment, especially when you develop AIDS. Can anybody just walk to a health facility and say, I want to test for HIV? Yes. You can walk to any health facility. You don't have to fall sick before you go, you, you, you seek testing. You, it's better to even test when you feel healthy and strong because that is when you're, you probably have not uh, uh, reached the late stage of HIV. If you are in the acute stage or the asymptomatic stage, it, you, it, it's better to then have the, um, uh, the test. So we encourage everybody to walk to any health facility uh, to test. And sometimes to, we bring the testing in the communities. Uh, so when you see any group doing HIV tests, or usually every health screening activity in the community has HIV testing as well. So when you see that, go to them, they will test you, counsel you, and help you uh, in any way that uh, they can. If you test negative, they will support you to continue doing the things that keep you negative. If you test positive, the world, that is not the end of the world. There is treatment and you can, uh, I can give you that once you are on treatment, you will remain strong and productive and you will live normal life like everyone else. Well, we're going to go for another short break. And uh, when we come back, I'd like to find out whether the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic is, is impacting or not impacting the fight against HIV. Short break. Now the focus is on uh, COVID-19. Has that in any way impacted the fight against HIV and AIDS? Um, I, I first of all want to state that 
COVID-19 is, you know, le okay, let me put it this way. HIV is not in competition with co COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, what we are seeing today about COVID-19 is exactly what we saw when HIV emerged in the early days of the epidemic. It, what is being done is the right thing to do. We have to make sure that we respond to COVID-19 as an emergency uh, in order to protect the, the population. And so what is being done is the right thing. Uh, it seems to have had all the you know, media hype. That, that is all right. It, what we are trying to do, we have, the HIV has its own problems. It's been there for a long time. People are used to hearing about it. And now when people hear about it, it, it doesn't even click because uh, they are used to it. Subconsciously, they have heard it many times. And so uh, we have to, for us, HIV and COVID-19 are dual epidemics. And so we have to ensure that as we fight HIV, as we fight TB, that is a comorbidity, uh, fight other comorbidities uh, associated with HIV, we must also fight COVID-19. Because COVID-19 is also another viral, viral infection. And just like HIV, it is an immune suppressive disease. And so we have to recognize that our efforts in HIV cannot be meaningful without putting the same effort or even more in COVID-19. What about uh, hepatitis B, which is also sexually transmitted? Yes, uh, hepatitis B, C are quite important for HIV uh, response because many people in some Ghana we have generalized epidemic but in countries where we have concentrated epidemic it is usually the concentration is usually among people who inject drugs and those who inject drugs actually uh, are vulnerable to hepatitis uh, B, C uh, in many countries uh, however, although we have a generalized epidemic in Ghana, there are people who also use injecting drugs. Uh, and the hepatitis B in particular is found to be one of the comorbidities so far as HIV is concerned. So now we have integrated uh, response. We are not looking only at HIV. We are looking at all the uh, comorbidities. So you have tuberculosis, you have hepatitis, you have uh, uh, some cancers, uh, especially women who live with HIV are highly vulnerable to um, or susceptible to uh, cervical cancer. And so in the new strategic plan, which is for 2021 to 2025, uh, the focus is to address these uh, comorbidities uh, to ensure that our uh, we have, you know, good health outcomes uh, for the HIV program. So, how do you see the future of this fight against HIV? Briefly, because we are running out of time now. Okay. So, what we are doing, uh, the 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 objective or the goal of the national response is to achieve epidemic control by the end of 2025, and that is possible. Epidemic control means that getting to a point where HIV will no longer be a public health concern in the country. So we will not be sitting here saying that AIDS is still a leading cause of death, you know, in Ghana. So we want to eliminate AIDS by the year 2030. And for us to do that, it means we should be able to diagnose people who live with HIV. At least we should diagnose 95% of them. 
and put 95% of those we diagnose on treatment, uh, antiretroviral treatment. And those we put on antiretroviral treatment, 95% must become virally suppressed. Uh, once people start taking the drugs, between 12, 6 to 12 months, they become virally suppressed if they adhere to treatment. And so once they adhere to treatment and become virally suppressed, then we have the opportunity to break the chain of HIV transmission. Why? Because they cannot transmit the virus sexually to their partners. And we know that sexual transmission accounts for 80% of HIV, all HIV infections in the country. And so once we do that, then it means we are cutting off a huge chunk of transmission. And so everybody will now have to diagnose the rest of the people who live with HIV and don't know their status. Um, and there are a number of people in that category. And so we encourage everybody to test. And when you test positive, that's not the end. Use antiretroviral medicines. There are a number of claims of cure uh, which tend to distract people on treatment. And it's one of the reasons why people die. Because when they hear of uh, herbal medicines that cure them, they go and, and or they switch to those medicines and in no time they, their health deteriorate and then uh, eventually if they do not go back to antiretroviral treatment, they die. Uh, and so the only effective treatment currently for HIV is antiretroviral medicines all over the world and therefore stick to it, adhere to it, and don't miss your refill. Anytime you have to go back and take uh, uh, and refill your medicines, do so. Don't wait for too long. Be punctual and collect the medicines and continue to take them every day. So thank you. Uh, well, I was going to say thank you very much for coming to the studio. We are most grateful to you for coming. Mm -hmm to the studio and we do hope that as you roll out other programs and so on, we have the opportunity to talk to you yeah. so that our viewers and so on can understand the fight against HIV and AIDS. Well, viewers, we were in this conversation with uh, Mr. Chairman Etwahini, Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission and hope that all of us have learned a thing or two from this conversation.